Good evening, Bahamas. Coming up tonight, the Davis administration continues to come under fire for events marking the third anniversary of Hurricane Dorian. Plus, the boat operators involved in a deadly Harbor Island boating accident last March take a plea deal. And traffic woes will continue in the Village Road area as a massive roadworks project drags on. Welcome to Our News and thanks for joining us. I'm Marlena Leonard. The pressure is still on the Davis administration days before a concert with gospel recording artist CeCe Wine in the set to get underway. Press Secretary Clint Watson also on the defense as a conversation he had with the survivor went viral. Berthany McDermott reports. Press Secretary Clint Watson coming under fire today as one Abaco resident speaks out against the Dorian Relief Concert and after a conversation with that displaced Dorian survivor was made public. Watson made the announcement a few weeks back, but it didn't sit well with a number of residents like Jessica Mullen, who hasn't been able to return to Abaco since the storm. As a survivor, it is truly offensive to think that any administration can feel it's appropriate to host a celebration in Nassau, while so many continue to struggle with the basic necessities such as power and running water in Abaco and Grand Bahama. To then further acknowledge our feelings but proceed on states, we hear you, but we don't care. Mullen joins others who found the event insensitive, adding that the use of the term celebration is insulting. Some expressing outrage on social media saying, hurricanes destroys homes and kills hundreds of Bahamians, the government lets throw a party. Meanwhile, another said they rather have a concert instead of doing the right thing by issuing building supplies that were donated for the survivors. Mullen says she made her position known by commenting on related posts on social media. After this, she said she received personal messages from Watson. I find that to be highly unprofessional. I could never find fathom in that position, uh, crossing an inappropriate line and messaging anyone, let alone a victim of a storm. When asked, Watson said he didn't recall the conversation. The concert slated for next Thursday was called a celebration, but Watson later termed it as a fundraising event. And if I inbox somebody regarding their concerns and questions regarding a concert and they chose to post that, that's even a different conversation. That's a different issue all by itself, that you post something publicly without somebody's consent and the police are here nodding their heads. While Watson says he's heard those who opposed it, he maintains it's for the the Bahamian people. We have sought to address people's concerns. As I said, I sought to, even when people inbox me or, or explain to me or call me or text me, I spent time trying to explain so that people's questions can be answered. Um, I do recognize, though, that there are some people who have their own reasons and own agendas, and I can't get into back and forth over something that we are doing. Reporting for Our News, I'm Berthony McDermott. Prime Minister Philip Davis responding to questions about the controversy surrounding planned celebrations for Dorian. Davis saying today he's not celebrating. He spoke with Our News after the opening of the Abaco Weather Symposium this morning and says he will be in Abaco to commemorate. I think they ought to be considered what they mean by celebrations. We have to commemorate. These are not, this is not something to celebrate. There's something to commemorate and we need to, to commiserate those persons who have been displaced, who are still uh, traumatized by the event, who are still repressed by the event, it still requires our assistance to carry them through. The, um, FNM Chairman Dr. Dwayne Sands weighing in on the conversation. He says the Free National Movement will not participate in any event for the anniversary of Hurricane Dorian that doesn't honor the memory of those who lost their lives. Sands says he saw the conversation posted to Facebook and thinks the press secretary doesn't understand his role. I don't think he understands that he speaks for the office of the Prime Minister. He is not an independent voice. He is not entitled to his own opinion. He is a mouthpiece, a spokesperson for the Prime Minister, full stop. And uh, when you now uh, get into a back and forth, a tete a tete, a repartee with uh, somebody who is grieving, somebody who is concerned, I think you have overstepped the boundaries. Humid conditions tonight with showers in the forecast for the weekend. Meteorologist Greg Thompson is in the Weather Center with more in your first look. Good evening, Greg. 
Yeah, thanks Marlene and a happy Friday evening everybody. Another warm and humid evening outside the studios. We did have some isolated showers earlier today. We'll see that in our satellite picture, but temperatures are in the mid 80s as we speak under partly cloudy skies. We'll call it humid. Winds out of the north, east at seven miles per hour and your feels like temperature, a very warm 92 degrees. On our satellite, we are sandwiched between two upper level disturbances. The one that moved across the Bahamas now across central Cuba. We also have another upper level low there in the open Atlantic. And we are, as I mentioned, and sandwich between those and some moisture plume is coming across us. We're looking at some scattered showers and thunderstorms mostly across the northwest and portions of the central Bahamas this evening and into tomorrow. But that activity will continue at least through tomorrow and into Sunday. That's your first look at weather. Your extended forecast is still to come. Still to come on our news, case closed. The Long Island MP drops a libel complaint. And a $6.5 million roadworks project on Village Road continues. And a murder mystery. Creatives unite to put on a play this weekend. That's coming up when our news returns. Got wireless dead zones at your house? How about endless buffering? Will you put the Wi-Fi password again? This is Aero. Aero is not just a new Wi-Fi router. Rev customers get the first Wi-Fi system that covers every inch of your beautiful home. Improving home coverage, higher speeds, high performance, and connectivity for up to 75 simultaneous devices. Aero. So why is your streaming your favorite show on HBO Max? Era with Rev gives you the freedom to stay connected while you work, learn, and play at home. Never think about Wi-Fi again with Arrow from Rev. Visit rev.bs slash Arrow or call 601-8992 to make your Wi-Fi wishes come true. Two men responsible for a boating accident that killed three people have been spared jail time as part of a plea deal. Back on March 14, 2021, a ferry boat captained by Marvin Minns Jr. slammed into an unlit 22-foot boat that was being operated by Ronaldo Grant near Man Island in Eleuthera. The collision took place around 9 p.m. and the passengers on Grant's boat were thrown into the water. Despite frantic rescue efforts, Candace McDonald, Leanna Cartwright and Jose Roberts Jr. lost their lives. Police charged Minns and Grant with manslaughter by negligence and were also charged with causing grievous harm to Rosette Carey and Shaquelle Cash. Grant was also charged with operating a vessel without a license. In a plea deal concluded before Justice Renee McKay this week, the men pleaded guilty to three counts of manslaughter by negligence while causing grievous harm charges were withdrawn. Grant and Minns will also pay compensation totaling $53,000 to avoid serving two years in prison. McDonald's estate will receive $13,000 and the estates of Cartwright and Roberts will each get $20,000. In a shocking turn of events, Long Island Member of Parliament Adrian Gibson has dropped his complaint against contractor Gregory Miller. Gibson told Chief Magistrate Joanne Ferguson Pratt that after prayerful consideration, he has forgiven Miller and wishes him the best. Miller was on trial and charges of attempted intentional libel and intentional libel. Prosecutors alleged that on December 31st, 2018, Miller attempted to defame Gibson, who was then executive chairman at the Water and Sewage Corporation, by transferring $200 to his bank account. On June 30th, 2019, Miller was accused of making defamatory remarks about Gibson during a TV appearance on Jones & Co. Gibson was set to be cross-examined before he withdrew his complaint. Meanwhile, Gibson refused to appear before Assistant Chief Magistrate Subasola Swain today to receive his voluntary bill of indictment for alleged corruption during his tenure at the Water and Sewage Corporation, although he was in the court building. Gibson faces a total of 56 counts on allegations that he failed to declare his interest in contracts awarded by the corporation. A recent altercation between two Free National Movement supporters outside a council meeting is now subject to a police investigation. That's according to party chairman Dr. Dwayne Sands, after a man said to be a supporter of former Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis reportedly assaulted an FNM meritorious council member. The member reportedly spoke about the former Prime Minister's governance. Dr. Sands telling Our News his party stands against violence. We believe that verbal, economic, physical, domestic, all forms of violence uh, are unacceptable. Uh, 
and so if it reaches anywhere near the precincts of anything to do with the free national movement, uh, then certainly we disassociate ourselves from it. Our news understands the man who was beaten has since been released from hospital after receiving injuries to the face and mouth. He is said to be a supporter of party leader Michael Pintard. Dr. Sands responding to spectators who say there remains a division in the party. We recently came out of convention. The party officers were elected uh, at convention in November and then again in February. There's only one leader of the free national movement. Um, I don't think there's anything more to be said about that. A 27-year-old corrections officer is accused of trying to break into Solomon's Yamacra two days in a row. Prosecutors say Frankly Lafayette first attempted to break into the business on August 23rd. Police arrested the prison officer on August 24th after he allegedly tried to break into the store again. On that occasion, police allegedly found him with a headlamp, screwdrivers, hammers and wrenches. Lafayette pleaded not guilty to two counts of attempted shop breaking and possession of instruments for burglary at his arraignment before Magistrate Shaka Surveil today. He was granted $7,000 bail and returns to court for trial on December 2nd. While the case is pending, Lafayette will be suspended from duty and placed on half pay. When our news comes back from the break, teeing up. Find out how a charity golf tournament will help feed thousands. Plus, coming up in Sports for Tonight, Marlena, Kai Jones and the Bahamas national team going up against Venezuela in front of a capacity crowd will give you details on their performance just ahead in sports. And taking the stage, how a group of young creatives form their own theater company. We have the details when our news returns. Got wireless dead zones at your house? How about endless buffering? Will you put the Wi-Fi password again? This is Arrow. Arrow is not just a new Wi-Fi router. Rev customers get the first Wi-Fi system that covers every inch of your beautiful home. Improving home coverage, higher speeds, high performance, and connectivity for up to 75 simultaneous devices. Arrow. So why is you streaming your favorite show on HBO Max? Arrow with Rev gives you the freedom to stay connected while you work, learn, and play at home. Never think about Wi-Fi again with Arrow from Rev. Visit rev.bs slash arrow or call 601-8992 to make your Wi-Fi wishes come true. This is our news. Welcome back. Just days away from the start of the new academic year and extensive road work on Village Road, one of the busiest, especially during the school year, are still underway. The cost of the major infrastructural upgrades? Some $6.4 million. Our Jamila Misik has this update tonight. The Village Road project began eight months ago, designed and constructed by Bahamians to improve the efficiency of the major thoroughfare. Minister of Works and Utilities Alfred Sayers. Cables are being laid uh, not only for the present use, but also for the further expansion going all the way to uh, Paradise Island and Atlantis. Um, so that the infrastructure is being not only fit for present purpose, but also uh, being fit uh, for the expected expansion and rehabilitation along the way of the existing infrastructure. Now, Queen's College will reopen for the new school year on Monday, and the contract coordinator says they've devised a plan to divert traffic. Off of Village Road, onto Brooklyn Avenue through the residential area, and around to Tuckaway Road. Any motorists going beyond uh, this very section, like if they're going just to Shirley Street, they'd be able to use the diversions we have placed throughout Blair. Works officials say the construction of a roundabout is also in the plan. The current situation, it has a lot of turning movements where there's conflicts and there's points of which cars can potentially crash and also creates a danger for pedestrians. So the placement of the roundabout would require us to do some demolition, some relocation of walls, uh, some relocation of vegetation, and then once that is done, uh, the roundabout would improve the efficiency flow. Contractor Emil Knoll says officials are now aiming for an end of November deadline. The majority of the most difficult part is going to be complete 
hopefully by next week, which is the installation of the 16 dog bank that you see going on now. The minister thanking motorists, residents and businesses in the area for their cooperation. Reporting for our news, I'm Jamila Misik. Bahamas Feeding Network hoping to raise $100,000 to continue its mission of providing hot meals for the less fortunate. The organization will host an inaugural golf tournament on September 25th at Ocean Club's golf course. We serve now about 70,000, 70,000 meals a month. Uh, and even that we find uh, can meet all the people who are in need. So we, in order to continue to make this need, we need to find additional resources. In this tournament, we're hoping to raise as much as $100,000. And if we can raise that money, that would mean 50,000 additional meals for families who presently go without, without hunger. Stubbs is expecting 124 golfers to participate. Sports Minister Mario Boleg endorsing the major fundraising event, encouraging those interested to help the cause. We use the sports to come back and give back, and this is a form using golf, as persons like myself and others who, who sports would have made us who we are today should come and give back and are playing the tournament and allow the, the rewards that we would have gained in the past now to give back to those who are less fortunate. The Bahamas national basketball team in action last night taking on Venezuela. Both Buddy Heald and Kai Jones hoping for the win. Marcellus Hall is up now in sports. All right, thanks a lot, Marlena. Welcome to our sports on a Friday, everybody. I'm Marcella Saul. Capacity crowd on hand last night at the Kendall Eyes Gymnasium as the Bahamas national men's team took on the squad from Venezuela in the second round of qualifications for the World Cup of Basketball. Team Bahamas getting off to a great start. However, as things always start, don't mean they're going to end that way. Let's take a look. Capacity crowd on hand as the Bahamas men's national basketball team taking on Venezuela at the Kendall Ice Gymnasium. Bahamas starting off very, very well in this one. They would jump out thanks to a couple of three-pointers and some dunks by Kai Jones and Buddy Heal, the two NBA players in attendance for this second half of the qualifications. Bahamas again looking good through one quarter. They actually led 29 to 21 at the end of the first quarter. That lead would hold up going into the half as the Bahamas going into halftime had a 42 to 35 lead. Second half, though, that's when things would start to go a little bit awry as Venezuela goes on a bit of a run here. They get within one at the end of the third quarter, trailing 60 to 59. Eventually, as the fourth quarter rolls around, Venezuela getting themselves good to get together. As far as offensively, they're able to knock down a couple of key baskets as well as get some steals. The Bahamas would have some critical turnovers down the stretch as well. Final score ends up Venezuela 81. 86 to 81 as they go ahead to get the victory there and the Bahamas now unfortunately unable to get it done. They will now go back to the drawing board as they head on down to Argentina for the second game of this qualification. Bahamas now hoping they will be able to pick up a victory there. Meanwhile, Kai Jones in his debut talking about the game and how they now have to make some adjustments. I mean, it's easy to gel and you have so many things in common, like being from this island and uh, also loving the game of basketball and just knowing how to play it at a high level, so it was easy to get it going. Um, like I said, we still got to clean up a few things, uh, but I don't think that's a part of like us not knowing how to play with each other. It's just like us really slowing down and um, making quick adjustments, so when we make a mistake or something, just trying to have that happen again. I felt like we did that uh, in terms of like the growth within the game. I feel like we did that throughout the game, we got better, but we should just let it get away from us with some little things. So we, we just got to get better overall, and we'll get it. Um, you know, this is like our first time, me and Buddy playing together, so in the future, we'll have a lot of games to play. You know, just keep moving forward, keep progressing. That is your check on sports for you here on this Friday. I'm Marcellus Hall. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Back to you, Marlena. Don't go away just yet. Meteorologist Greg Thompson is back in the Weather Center. Greg, we're watching activity ramp up in the tropics. Yes, Marlena, activity now popping up across the uh, tropics. We're starting to watch a couple more active tropical waves and things are really shaping up as we approach the peak of the season. We'll tell you more about that in our extended forecast. And a group of young actors set to put on their first play this weekend. That's coming up when our news returns. Got wireless dead zones at your house? How about endless buffering? Will you put the Wi-Fi password again? This is Aero. Aero is not just a new Wi-Fi router. Rev customers get the first Wi-Fi system 
that covers every inch of your beautiful home. Improving home coverage, higher speeds, high performance, and connectivity for up to 75 simultaneous devices. Arrow. So why is you streaming your favorite show on HBO Max? Arrow with Rev gives you the freedom to stay connected while you work, learn, and play at home. Never think about Wi-Fi again with Arrow from Rev. Visit rev.bs slash arrow or call 601-8992 to make your Wi-Fi wishes come true. Welcome back to our news. More developments in the tropics as three areas are now being monitored. Meteorologist Greg Thompson joins us now from the Weather Center with the latest. Hello again, Greg. Yes, Marlena, activity picking up across the tropics. We are watching a couple areas that has the potential for some development. The first one is in the Caribbean Sea. The tropical wave now moving across the uh, northern coast of South America. But as it progresses towards the west, activity is expected to pick up as it approaches the Yucatan Peninsula. National Hurricane Center giving that a low chance for formation. Uh, should move into an area that's going to be conducive for development over the next, well, several days into next week. Most of the activity will be shaping up. And then out there in the open Atlantic we're watching two areas as well that um, area that we mentioned last evening um, in the central Atlantic that has the potential for some development over the next couple of days as it moves towards the west and that second one behind uh, near the Cape Verde Islands or the Cabo Verde Islands that one also has a low chance for formation. Satellite view showing most of the activity disorganized showers and thunderstorms associated with the one in the Caribbean Sea right now most of the activity is across the north coast of uh, South America but as I mentioned as it approaches the Yucatan Peninsula it has the chances for some further development and then those two areas in the Atlantic real healthy systems uh, it, well according to the satellite picture a lot of showers and thunderstorms associated with both of those systems they will continue to move towards the west and they have a long time for us to watch them so we will continue to monitor these two systems closely and then if you notice off of Africa a lot more activity popping up there. So the activity now picking up as we approach the peak of the season, which is the first and second week of September. Locally near our location, that upper level disturbance moving across Cuba, another one to the east of the Bahamas and uh, sandwich between that, a lot of moisture associated with another frontal boundary that's actually across North Florida. That will keep our moisture plume across us and instability across the islands. We're looking at some showers and thunderstorms across the island chain through tonight and into tomorrow, possibly even into the uh, beginning of next week. If you plan on doing any boating tonight through tomorrow, your winds are going to be really nice for that. East to southeast winds are 10 to 15 knots, seas two to four feet. Those winds will fall light and variable across the northwest and central Bahamas tonight through tomorrow. Your high tide will be at 819 tonight. Here's a look now at your national forecast. In your extended forecast, showers and thunderstorms in the forecast throughout the weekend and in possibly into early next week. And of course, we will continue to monitor those systems in the tropics and make sure you get your hurricane plans together as the season is now approaching the peak. That's your look at weather. Make it a safe weekend, everybody. The Guild is the newest artist group formed for young people by young people, and they'll hit the stage at St. John's College with their first production, The Mousetrap. Megan Shepard checks in with the cast and crew. Some 21 members make up The Guild, a new group of artists that aims to groom and highlight young talent. Founder Alia Hagegal says the group was formed in just two short months. After we decided on Agatha Christie's The Mousetrap as our first production, we ended up <laughs> morphing into this huge artist society with lots of different act, um, actors and artists from other um, genres like classical music and instrumentalists and even graphic designers and, and painters. She shares why they felt it was necessary to establish this group. We've never had a troupe that was for young people, by young people, and especially in the 22nd, the 21st century, um, with Gen Z and millennials, we need that outlet for our own creativity. And we need to be able to not only be ourselves, but have our work put out without being stifled by traditional like gender binaries, for example, or um, anything like racism or homophobia. This weekend, the group will put on their first stage play, The Mousetrap by Agatha Christie. Actor Jeremy Johnson and sound technician Brittany Gibson say the murder mystery will leave audience members in awe. The plot you won't see coming, 
It's a great time, not only for families, but um, date nights or group nights and anything like that. I have seen the show a countless times, every rehearsal, and every rehearsal, it gets better and better. The play begins at 8 p.m. on the 26th and 27th. Hagagal is encouraging persons to come out as Proceeds not only supports the Guild, but also her journey to attend the London Academy of Music and Dramatic Arts. You're not just supporting the Guild itself, but you're supporting my education as I prepare to go off, and you're supporting the art at Orange Economy, which everybody talks about, but we need to put our money where our mouth is and support our young people. Reporting for our news, I'm Megan Shepard. Thank you for joining us for our news tonight. On behalf of the entire team, I'm Marlena Leonard. Thank you for having me this week. Be sure to tune in tomorrow for our news weekend edition.